Right, today I'm going out to two Vocara boilers. Uh, they both got intermittent faults and our engineers weren't able to fix them. Uh, both customers are now complaining, uh, so I'm going to go out to them, uh, hopefully get them fixed. I'm going to go on the scooter today. Both jobs are relatively close to home, so if I did need to pop back for anything, it's no big deal. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm bringing, um, and hopefully both customers will let me film. So, Okay, so as usual, I'm bringing this stuff. Um, I'm bringing just a clip on NTC right now. I have got my kit in my bag in the van, but that was just in a bucket, so I'll grab that. It's easier. Um, so just my usual, my tool, tool roll, a little pouch with safety stuff in it. Uh, head torch, gloves, a pump in case I need to pump up an expansion vessel. Uh, my gauge for that is already on the uh, scooter. Uh, and then this bag is my analyzer, which has also got my warning notices and labels. Um, so hopefully I'll get these boilers fixed. I mean, I'm gonna, one of them's blowing the fuse intermittently. So I think a lot of the tests I'll be doing on that one are gonna be multimeter based, which I'll try and film because that's really handy for people to know. So let's get this all on the scooter. Okay, so this is all loaded up. You've seen everything I put in there. Uh, the only things you haven't seen is I put some fuses on my IDs in there. Um, and the torch and stuff. But that's, you know, that's my general setup. Okay, so on arrival here, the customer had been running the tap for over half an hour and the boiler was still working fine. And throughout this whole job, the tap stays running. So this boiler is constantly running for about three hours. Okay, so like all jobs, I've familiarized myself with the boiler. We've got the diverter, the pump, the water pressure sensor, the gas valve. Uh, in there with the uh, purple leads is the um, domestic hot water flow switch. It's a switch because it's only got two wires. The condensed trap at the back, spark generator there. Uh, the white leads are going into the combustion chamber and these two red leads go to the NTC for the hot water. And obviously we've got the two leads going up into the combustion chamber which we'll uh, have a look at in a second. Uh, that silver pipe is the condensed pipe that often rots through but this one was okay. Um, like I say, boiler's running the whole time I'm there. Burner pressure spot on them, 10 millibar, just as it should be. It's just doing the basic checks first um, on this one. Basics first. Put that in there. Just gonna cover this for a sec. Mmm. They're getting they're getting a full code of one, which is flame failure. Horrible combustion. So maybe we'll deal with that issue first, shall we? So I now need to work on this boiler. It's just gone to zero one, actually, just done the fault in front of my face. Um, That's good. We'll turn that off, turn it back on. Done it again. Doing the fault right now. So let's see what's going on with this. We know we've got a problem with CO, but let's. I can't really get you watching what I'm doing. Maybe I'll try in a sec once. Oh. 
wasn't sparking. The fan runs now close to zero one, so let's try that again. Off. Off. On. Hot taps running. You hear the gas valve open. There's no spark. Fan now runs. Zero one. So let's have a look inside what's going on when that happens. But well, we don't appear to be getting spark. I think the gas valve open. Actually, let's check if the gas valve open, shall we? This gauge is a bit wonky now. But we would expect that level there to go down. And it does. Gas valve does open, but we don't have spark. So there's our issue. Fan's running now. It sounds to me like the fan only runs after the gas valve opens. Maybe it's a two speed fan. Let's have a look. And that's the top tip. That's how you can tell if something's sparking. Just rest that neon on it. Okay, so. As you saw, we weren't getting spark there. Um, I'll go through what we've got on this. We've got a burner overheat here. Okay, we've got um, what looks like an overheat in there. Um, I can't see much else up there. Let's see what we've got here. I think we're probably gonna have an NTC. Um, oh, we have, we've got an NTC down here. Look, that on Vocaras, they're usually at the back there. Vocaras and Sabres, you see with the blue the blue connector on it. Sorry, I can't have the phone landscape to get in there. Uh, we've got a airbrush switch uh, on the recuperator or secondary heat exchange. We've got a condensed sensor, uh, which will give a different fault code if that's faulty. Just have a good look in there. The fan is a fan that can modulate, a variable speed fan. Um, so what I did, because I wasn't sure if this could interrupt the ignition process or the overheat here on the burner could interrupt the ignition process, I phoned Vocara just to be sure. There's nothing worse than hunting for a, a fault with a, you know, it's not sparking. That's, we know what that, that's the issue. It's not sparking, but why? I just wanted to make sure that the air pressure switch, the condensed sensor or the burner overheat wouldn't interrupt that sparking process. And according to Vocara, they do not. So. Sorry, I've got a phone call there. So that's the ignition transformer there. Uh, Vocara say if that gas valve is lifting, which we know it is, we saw we've got a burner pressure. If that gas valve is lifting and we're not getting spark, it can only be two things, uh, which is there's a problem with the cable, which we'll check, we'll, we'll, un we'll check it at both ends, uh, or there's a problem with the PCB for ignition. Um, so let's try and rectify that issue first, or try and find the cause of that issue first, and then uh, then we'll look at the CO stuff. Okay, so I've just taken the cover off just to check the electrode, um, just in case it was grounded out or something. I'm gonna clean it, but it looks okay. Um, but the heat exchanger looks rather mucky, so we'll give that a clean up. That might be part cause of the CO. Um, look at that nice and green on top. Uh, so I'll give that a good clean out. Just make sure that flu hood it looks crusty, but it's okay. Um, yeah, a bit of a manky boy of this. Um, but yeah, we'll give that all a good going over and see where we're at. Okay, let me talk you through this board, okay? Um, where my probes are now, on that live and neutral, that goes to this transformer, which is what creates the spark, okay? Um, 
Hang on, I'm totally honest, I don't know what the white wire on the earth do right now. I'm guessing they have ionisation. Let's have a let's have a little look on here. Yeah, the earth is just a chassis earth and the white wire is for ionisation I guess. Let's have a look. Where is it going? You can't really see right now, but um I'm pretty confident it's something like that. Um then this other plug here, so let's eliminate this. That plug there is for the modulation of the gas valve, okay? And this plug here that's got two lives and two, two neutrals. Uh, one of them is main power coming from the main PCB onto it, which is the two closest to the camera. And the other two is live and neutral to the gas valve. So basically, if we have 240 on the gas valve, we should have 240 on the ignition. Uh, and if we don't, the only thing that control controls that is the uh, is this PCB. This PCB gets power and does the gas valve and all the ignition. So we're going to try and recreate the fault again. So this has been running on max. I'm now going to turn it down. Flame's gone off. And this is where the fault would occur now. You see that's gone to zero on there. On reignition, it would not light, but it did open the gas valve, if you remember correctly. So if it does open the gas valve, we have got 240 on that. So here we go. Oh, it lit then. Turned it down again. Turn it back up a little bit. So uh, basically the long and short of this is, uh, this boiler didn't go to fault again the whole time I was there. I was in this property for about two and a half, maybe three hours. Uh, and the boiler only went to fault once and then it recreated that fault two times for me right at that moment in time and then it never went to fault again um, so obviously then I had to deal with the CO issue uh, or try and get an idea of what's going on with that um, so I opened up the recuperator and you know it looks a bit crusty in there I wasn't able to pull out this centerpiece at the time so if I show you in there, look, it's, it's a bit crusty in there as well. Um, if I care, I suggest to cleaning that out. Uh, that centre bit right now just doesn't want to come out at all. Um, I do get this out on the next visit, um, and I am able to clean in there. But um, I should have checked this recuperator a little bit further. But you'll see on the next visit um, why that's the case. Okay, so here we are now. So we've reduced that CO quite significantly. Um, the reason it's still not correct is the recuperator or the secondary heat exchanger. Uh, in there is all blocked out, all needs cleaning out. However, I can't do that now. Um, frustratingly enough. As you can see, it's a lot better than it was. Okay, so this is um, just a shot showing you a bit clearer what I could see when I was working on this boiler. So I could see the multimeter, the neon, and I could see within the combustion chamber. Um, when I'm using the phone for filming, it's, the shot is not wide at all, so obviously you can't see as clearly as I could. Um, but basically what it got down to was the board got the little ignition control board got power. We know it opened the gas valve because luckily my gauge was on the gas valve when it went to full and I've also got that recorded so you can see the um, the gas valve definitely opens so basically this board is dumb it just gets 240 volts it opens the gas valve and lights uh, 
everything is controlled within that board and on the electrodes and the spark generator from that point so therefore it can only be something from that point so it can only be something from the little ignition board to the electrodes or the little transformer so the company didn't want me to waste any more time at this property uh, and we ordered all three parts so hopefully that will fix it but you'll see in the next video Okay, so this is it. Just going to get the customer to sign this warning notice. Got label on the boiler already. Turned it off, um, and I'll be back to fix it.